So this is the, the first piece that I made with granular synthesis back in uh, 1975. So I had a large mainframe computer that this, these sounds were calculated on. And this was my first attempt to organize the granular sounds into some kind of a study. I wouldn't call it a composition. It's really an experiment. This is the Studer 8807 analog tape recorder. So it's very primitive, 1975. Very difficult to work with this material. You're basically writing computer programs. There were no terminals. There were no displays. You're writing text on punch cards, feeding the cards into the computer, and then waiting days to hear what the result was going to be. Voila. I mixed this piece at the Village Recorder, this very chic pop place in Los Angeles. It's kind of fun. It's, I think the first time they'd heard something like that. We live in an age of technology in which machines touch every part of our lives. It is not surprising that music has also been influenced by technology. We are listening to music in which every sound was created electronically. For me, composing is about the telling a story. The sounds are born, they live, they change, they meet other sounds, they collide. One sound destroys another, they merge together, they get married, they get divorced, they get unstable, they change identity, they mutate, and then they die. So it's all about a narrative. It's a narrative about sounds. You know, as a kid, I played in various bands, and we always had ele electric instruments. So that sound world of electric instruments has always been uh, a reference point for me. I didn't grow up playing violin in the orchestra um, and want to write the great American cello concerto. It seemed to me that pop music reached a certain point and kind of stayed the same for a long time. Uh, you know, the classic rock. And I just kept going. I didn't want to stay there anymore. But I was uh, 19 years old, and uh, a friend of mine was a graduate student at the University of Illinois, which was a real hotbed for experimental music at that time. And together we would go in at night and work. And it seemed to me to be the perfect uh, thing for me. I wanted something that would challenge me intellectually, but also challenge me aesthetically. Unfortunately, the technology was very primitive. It took a long time to get to the place where we are now, which is what I would call a golden age of electronic music. It's, uh, you know, I, this is what I tell my students. I mean, they're so lucky. It's so easy now. It's so cheap. There's so much software. There's so many cool things. Um, and <laughs> very different than the early 70s when I started, where 
you had to learn programming and it took weeks to get a sound out of the computer and it was very disappointing and uh, it's a really, in my view, a really good time to be a composer of electronic music. Well, electronic music extends the domain of composition from a closed, homogeneous set of notes, as you have in traditional music, to an open universe of heterogeneous sound objects. So instead of working with the 12 notes of the equal tempered scale, all of a sudden now we're working with any sound possible. And that really changes the game. It extends the temporal domain of composition down to the level of microsounds. So I'm composing not just at the, the formal structure, but also the phrases, the surface level, and below the surface level to zones that uh, are only perceived uh, macroscopically. Instead of just composing at this note level, we can go below the note level and compose that too, the so-called microsound level. And that's very interesting. That's not something you could do in the world of uh, classical music previously. It's very much like the pointillist painters. Thousands and thousands of brush strokes. Putting them here, putting them there. Where do you look for your sound? Well, I, I look inside the computer a lot. I, I, you know, a lot of my sound is, my sound palette, and this makes me a little bit different from some people, is, is pretty synthetic. Um, uh, you know, natural sounds are beautiful, concrete as we call them sounds, are beautiful, and I do use them from time to time. But the virtual sound world is also beautiful. The world of sine waves, of impulses, of electronically generated tones. Um, that's a vast space. And I'm interested in exploring that space and using it. And uh, voila.